Welcome back to YWCC for February, Remaining Faithful to God. The background reading is found in Daniel chapter 6, verses 1 through 28. Let's look at Daniel chapter 6. It pleased Darius to set over the kingdom 120 princes, which should be over the whole kingdom, and over these three presidents, of whom Daniel was first that the princes might give account unto them, and the king should have no damage. Then this Daniel was preferred above the presidents and princes, because, he, because an excellent spirit was in him, and the king thought to set him over the whole realm. Then the presidents and princes sought to find occasion against Daniel concerning the kingdom. But they could find none occasion nor fault, for as much as he was faithful, neither was there any error or fault found in him. Then said these men, We shall not find any occasion against this Daniel, except we find it against him concerning the law of his God. Then these presidents and princes assembled together to the king, and said thus unto him, King Darius, Live forever, all the presidents of the kingdom, the governors and the princes, the counselors and the captains have consulted together to establish a royal statute and to make a firm decree that whosoever shall ask a petition of any god or man for thirty days, save of thee, O king, he shall be cast into the den of lions. Now, O king, Establish the decree and sign the writing that it be not changed according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Wherefore, King Darius signed the writing and the decree. Now, when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem. He kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed, and gave thanks before his God, and he did aforetime. Then these men assembled and found Daniel praying and making supplication before his God. Then they came near and spake before the king concerning the king's decree. Hast thou not signed a decree that every man that shall ask a petition of any God or man within thirty days, save of thee, O king, shall be cast into the den of lions? The king answered and said, The thing is true, according to the law of the Medes and Persians, which altereth not. Then answered they, and said before the king, That Daniel, which is of the children of the captivity of Judah, regardeth not thee, O king, nor the decree that thou hast signed, but maketh his petition three times a day. Then the king, when he heard these words, was sore displeased with, with himself, and set his heart on Daniel to deliver him, and he labored to the, young, to the going down of the sun to deliver him. Then these men assembled unto the king, and said unto the king, Know, O king, that the law of the Medes and Persians is, that no decree nor statute which the king establishes may be changed. Then the king commanded, and they brought Daniel and cast him into the den of lions. Now the king spake and said unto Daniel, Thy God, whom thou servest continually, he will deliver thee. And a stone was brought and laid upon the mouth of the den. And the king sealed it with his own signet and with the signet of his lords, that the purpose might not be changed concerning Daniel. Then the king went to his palace and passed the night fasting, neither for instruments of music brought before him, and his sleep went from him. Then the king arose very early in the morning and went in haste unto the den of lions. And when he came to the den, he cried with a lamentable voice unto Daniel. And the king spake and said to Daniel, O Daniel, servant of the living God, is thy God, whom thou servest continually able to deliver thee from the lions? Then said Daniel unto the king, O king, live forever. 
My God has sent his angel and have shut the lion's mouth, that they have not hurt me. For as much as before him innocency was found in me, and also before thee, O king, have I done no hurt. Then was the king exceedingly glad for him, and commanded that they should take Daniel up out of the den. So Daniel was taken up out of the den, and no manner of hurt was found upon him, because he believed in his God. And the king commanded, and they brought those men which had accused Daniel, and they cast them into the den of lions, them, their children, and their wives. And the lions had the mastery of them, and break all their bones in pieces wherever they came at the bottom of the den. Then King Darius wrote unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, Peace be multiplied unto you. I make a decree that in every dominion my kingdom, of my kingdom men tremble and fear before the God of Daniel, for he is the living God and steadfast forever, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed, and his dominion shall be even unto the end. He delivereth and rescueth, and he worketh signs and wonders in heaven and in earth, who hath delivered Daniel from the power of the lions. So this Daniel prospered in the reign of Darius and in the reign of Cyrus the Persian. The, the memory verse says Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Now when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went into his house and his windows being open in his chamber toward Jerusalem, he kneeled upon his knees three times a day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as he did aforetime. King Darius chose Daniel to be chief above the presidents and princes whom he had placed over the kingdom's affairs. Daniel was preferred over the others because, as the Bible describes, he had an excellent spirit. This angered the presidents and princes, and they conspired against Daniel. They could not find any fault in his ways, so they attacked his faithfulness to God. A decree was drafted to set Daniel in opposition to King Darius. If he prayed to any god or man other than the king, he would be cast into the den of lions. We are living in perilous times. Now more than ever, it is critical that we hold fast to the principles of God. Laws are being written and signed that directly conflict with holiness. Sin is being deemed legal and therefore morally acceptable. Humanity is riddled daily with reports of greed, deviation, violence, and heresy. Christians are expected to honor the laws of the land. However, we serve the only king and his decrees govern our lives. There are times when the pressure to conform may come from our family, friends, or co-workers. We are asked to forego our standards in exchange for relationships, activities, or advancement. We must remain aware of the devil's aim. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. The men tried to steal Daniel's position by targeting his devotion to God. Ultimately, they wanted Daniel dead. Though Daniel was living among unbelievers, he did not abandon his way of life. He continued to pray and worship God. Daniel knew the decree was signed and could not be reversed, but he deemed prayer to be essential to his existence. Though it would cost his life, he did not cease to pray. Neither did he hide his devotion by shielding the window. We must not compromise our relationship with God to avoid rejection, persecution, or death. Our help does not come from man's favor. Our personal relationships or our perceived positions, without God, we can do nothing. That is John chapter 15, verse 5. When Daniel emerged from the lion's den, he was completely unharmed. Not only did God deliver him for his faithfulness, but King Darius wrote a new decree declaring Daniel's God to be the true and living God. We do not have to fall victim to our circumstances. When we hold steadfast to our beliefs, we position ourselves for miracles and unbelievers can become believers. Thought to Ponder 
The princes and presidents knew that Daniel would continue to pray despite the consequences. Additional scriptures for study is Matthew chapter 6 verse 33, Matthew chapter 10 verse 28, 1 Peter chapter 4 verse 19, and Hebrews 10 and 33. God bless you and thank you for joining me today.